What is up, guys? Welcome back for week five of the National Pokemon League, the NPL. This week, we are taking on the Portland Timbers, coached by Chris Togavar, formerly known as Togavar. I think he just goes by Chris now, TTM Chris. Uh, and uh, he's the uh, very first coach, no, the second coach that I ever played in the NPL back when I replaced Rob in season five. I always talk about that. And uh, he... Uh, it's a very uh, I, I love I love Chris I love playing against Chris uh, we've played the uh, three times now including this time uh, first time was in the NPL when I replaced Rob second time was in March Madness and uh, I beat him that time so we're tied one and one he beat me the first time with a uh, Mega Pidgeot and then uh, I beat him with uh, Scarf Tapu Bulu speed tying his Greninja so that was quite an interesting uh, turn of events there in March Madness that got me to top four uh, that uh, that March Madness back in 2017. Uh, so now we get a chance to play Chris again. Chris is actually replacing um, Donaghy, uh, or Dan, and the Cincinnati Slifer Reds. Uh, Dan decided to drop out of, uh, of the NPL and quite a few other things that he was in. Uh, he's kind of tired of Mons right now. He wants to take a break, and I fully uh, fully understand him. Uh, so Chris ended up picking up his team, and he, wanted, he made one major transaction that completely threw off the idea of the build that I had for Dan's team initially, uh, and he ended up getting Pelipper. And getting rain with not only his Manaphy, uh, but and his Kabutops, but as well as his Mega Scizor, paired with Veil with a little Nine Tails, and I was like, "Damn, this team is scary." He can get up Veil and boost his speed on Kabutops, uh, boost his attacking power on Manaphy. That's absolutely terrifying, and I was not looking forward to playing this team. So let's get right into the team builder. Uh, here we have Terror, our Mega Aerodactyl, the first mod making an appearance. Decided to bring Ice Fang because I can switch into Zygarde relatively well, uh, even a thousand arrows, and just Ice Fang to scare it out. Uh, we got Stone Edge on there, hits the majority of his team other than the Zygarde. Uh, pretty hard, the uh, Nine Tails and the Rotom Heat, of course, taking super effective damage. Everything else taking neutral. Ice Fang is also there for the Shaman, sort of. Um, so as it does hit that thing super effectively and I can get a flinch anything like that so that's always nice we got stealth rock and tailwind is the uh, move that I decided on going with last uh, tailwind obviously made a lot of my mons faster than his under the uh, under the rain uh, specifically his kabutops I wanted to make sure that my checks to kabutops had a chance to outspeed it even in rain so tailwind made a lot of sense also check the Z Manaphy if I couldn't knock it out that turn. Uh, Z Rain Dance, for example. Uh, Zygarde if it got up to plus one. Uh, if I could only take 1,000 arrows, if I had a different way to revenge it, I would go for a Tailwind into an Ice Fang on the following turn. Make sure that he couldn't get up three DDs. Uh, and then uh, also just outspeeding Scarfers on his team. Things like Rotom Heat, the Pelipper, and whatnot. So. Uh, and the, the Hoopa, of course. That's the main idea. The speed on there is for Scarf Pelipper, specifically, is, is what I mentioned. Um, that's something that I don't, I don't want to get caught by turn one, so Stone Edge can definitely hit that thing hard. Uh, and we got Stealth Rocks there, because, uh, of course, on there, because Stealth Rocks do hinder uh, mainly his Pelipper and his Rotom Heat a lot, especially also his uh, Alolan Nine Tails. I want to limit that thing's switch ins and the number of times that it can get up the Veil, so that's the idea there. Moving on to the next mod, we have Captain Crunch this week coming with a Choice Scarf set. I decided to run dual momentum with Volt Switch and U-Turn uh, as he does have that ground type in Zygarde. If I reveal Volt Switch early on in the game, because he, he's probably not going to hard switch in Zygarde to uh, Coco considering I can click Ferium the turn after if I'm not Scarfed. Uh, if I reveal Volt Switch, I want a Zygarde coming in on me later and I can get off a U-Turn or Dazzle on that thing. Uh, either gain momentum or uh, hit it pretty hard with Dazzling Gleam. We are, we are modest, uh, max special attack. We got 132 speed. This is enough speed for plus one Manaphy. So essentially his um, essentially his, uh, his Zemon, uh, that can set up the rain for itself and also set up its speed. I want to make sure that I have something to beat that. I also, I always like having something like that. Uh, I faced off against Randy in the GBA D League, and I think I had, not Randy, sorry, against, um, I think it was Pop C, uh, and his Manaphy, and I wanted to make sure that I had, like, two solid checks to it, uh, to make sure that I could check whatever set that it was. I, I, pl I planned a Blastoise in consequence to the Manaphy, so that was the idea there, was to, uh, to make sure that I could, uh, I could take on the Manaphy at all times. Whether it be Wakonberry, whether it be, uh, Z Raindance, I want to just Volt Switch out on it and see what it is, essentially, uh, and Thunderbolt can knock it out from full, obviously, with the, the electric terrain up, so that's always a good thing. If he doesn't have a Wakonberry, of course, and that's why I'm running Volt Switch, is to break that 
thing. So yeah, that's uh, that's the Manaphy check right there, the Scarfed Coco. It also does a lot to his team if you look uh, outside of like the Rotom Heat. Nothing else is really taking Thunderbolts. Uh, Zygarde and Rotom Heat, everything else is taking a lot of damage from T-Bolt. Hoopa has to be weary of, uh, of U-Turn and whatnot, so there's that. Now, uh, you do see there's a Mega Scizor there, and the only Mon that I've lost to this season is Scizor. So I'm not making the same mistake in bringing Bulletproof Como uh, to check it. I am bringing our Silvali Fire this time. Uh, RC is 50%. Come in with Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Parting Shot, and Defog. So, uh, the idea behind Defog is that this is also a supplementary, uh, supplementary check to his Nine Tails. It can switch in on Blizzards relatively well, uh, despite the fact that it doesn't have any Spadef. I'm going Max Fizzdev because I don't want uh, I don't want Scizor like knocking me out with a Bullet Punch ever. Uh, <laughs> pretty much, I want to make sure that I can take it from like 20, 23 percent uh, at all times, essentially, because I'm going to be coming in on rocks more more likely than not, seeing as his Rock Setter uh, is the uh, is the Mill Tank or the Kaboot tops um i can't really switch into either one of those too well uh considering that uh mill tank thick fat takes flamethrower and ice beam for days uh and uh, i can only parting shot out on it so i don't really ever want to come in on mill tank uh rotom heat is uh is another thing i don't want to come in on and especially kabutops is other rock setters so he only has two rock setters those specifically uh now to be honest i didn't expect the mill tank to come just because I didn't feel like his matchup against me was too, too good. It was kind of Como setup fodder, uh, and it couldn't take hits from Diggersby too well either. So I didn't really think that thing would come. Um, if it did, it had to had to be carrying Fire Punch, in my opinion, uh, because Durant is also a setup. Uh, it's also a setup target for Durant, so he has to be very careful about that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty basic check to his uh, his Mega Scizor. I'm outspeeding Adam and Scizor with this set, uh, which also outspeeds uh, Modest Pelipper, so I can parting shot out on that thing because I'm not running Thunderbolt. Ice Beam on there is, a, is pretty obvious. It's for Zygarde. I want to be sure, make sure that pretty much everything on my team has a way to hit Zygarde. Uh, otherwise, because I don't want it ever coming in, especially on the things that it can come in on easily, like uh, Aerodactyl, for example, if, it does, if it's not carrying Ice Fang. Uh, uh, this thing. If I see the Zygarde, I'm, I'm clicking Ice Beam most of the time if the Scizor is in. Um, it could be uh, it could be slower than me though, so that could be a, not an incorrect play, but most of the time he's probably not going to keep in the Scizor against my Silvali Fire, so there's that. Moving on, we do have C Major, the Como. I am still bulletproof, uh, because Soundproof doesn't really do anything for me this game. I looked at his team and there was nothing that screamed um, Soundproof is going gonna, is gonna to be good for you. Uh, however, there are certain like ball moves, like... Um, for example, Manaphy's Energy Ball, um, and certain things like that that I wanted to be able to dodge, so Soundproof didn't do anything for me. I, I, I decided to run Bulletproof. Uh, leftovers, Drain Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Protect. So, um, this is a pretty good check to most of his physical attackers outside of Scizor and like Hoopa with a band. Uh, I can get off a lot of damage on everything. Uh, it's a decent uh, rain check in general, but it, the main reason that I brought it was for the Kabutops. Uh, I wanted to have uh, something that could take any hit from it, and I EV'd this thing to be able to take a protected uh, Z double edge from the Kabutops, as I did see that in one of my mocks. I protected Z double edge into another double edge if all I took was one round of rocks because uh, my leftovers would bring me back up a little bit and then I'd be able to drain punch him on the next attack on the double edge and pretty much knock him out because he'd take recoil uh, as a result of going for it. So uh, I wanted to make sure, absolutely sure, that I, I had something for the Kabutops because if that thing came in rain, I was screwed. You guys saw the rest of my team. Like Arrow, uh, the, uh, this this thing, this thing right here, Captain Crunch or Coco, it can't outspeed Kabutops in rain. If it, like it, it can try, but then there's always Aqua Jet on the table and I don't want to let this thing get weakened because Manaphy's just as big of a threat, so I wanted to make sure to have something, and that's going to be Como. Uh, Ice Punch is there again for the Zygarde. I didn't want to run a Dragon move, really, because then I wouldn't be... Um I don't think I'd be hitting uh, the Shaman as hard either, so that was something I wanted to catch on the Switch with Shaman. Shaman with... Um with Dazzling Gleam uh, is very, very scary uh, against my team in general as well. Like Earth Power, Dazzling Gleam, and, uh, uh, and Seed Flare. Uh, I could pretty much knock everything out, except for the next mod on our team, which is, once again, coming second week in a row with Salt Vest Meloetta. Um, this was my... Uh, we I figured out in mocks, especially with Verd, that this was probably my best check to all of his special attackers, uh, being that I could gain momentum on things like his uh, his Nine Tails, his Shaman, uh, and I could thunder all of the the Rain Mons. So Pelipper, Manaphy, and and Kabutops. I could thunder all of them in the rain. Uh, make sure that I can I can knock them out. Pelipper straight drops. Manaphy takes way over half uh, from the thunder. 
Uh, that's why I have the 36 modest on there. 164 spit F, 252 HP. Uh, this is enough for After Rock Surf not to two hit KO me, I believe. Uh, plus three surf. Uh, in the rain, it does. Outside of the rain, it does not, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that was the idea behind the, the spread. And then the speed is once again for uh, Adamant Megasis or Modest uh, Pelipper. So pretty straightforward. We got knockoff. HP Ice once again always hitting the Zygarde. Uh, and knockoff was really good for things like his Pelipper. For example, his Rotom Heat getting rid of a, like a potential Choice Scarf. Leftovers on the Mill Tank. Light Clay on the uh, on the Nine Tails. Uh, Hoopa doesn't appreciate switching into knockoff. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, his only mons that could switch into knockoff were Mega Scizor, which I had checked with Silvali Fire. And his his uh his other mon was uh manaphy if it was z but that i had checked with the thunder so that idea uh not to mention thunder also has a 30 percent chance to para I, i'm never going to do that again never clicking a move thunder also has a 30 percent chance to para uh and that means that um that it goes up to 60 with Serene Grace. <laughs> so if that connects, that's a pretty good chance to paralyze. Um, and in the rain, it always connects. So that's a, a really cool tech um, on, on Meloetta for this matchup. Last one on the team. Uh, once again, <laughs> another uh, pairing is uh, Assault Vest Meloetta plus Shia Poof, the, uh, the Rockium Durant. So I looked at his team. Uh, I looked at an offensive mon that could have a really good matchup if he decided not to bring rain because I think it was pretty set well set up for rain. Uh, and that is this thing. So we got Thunderfang, X Scissor, uh, Stone Edge, and Hone Claws. Uh, Thunderfang is boosted in the electric terrain, unlike Arrows, because this thing is on the ground. Uh, so that's a huge help to Coco, is the fact that this thing gets Thunderfang. Uh, Hone Claws is obviously going to boost my uh, my accuracy. Uh, Hone Claws, uh, Stone Edge, by the way, hits 86% accuracy, uh, even with Hustle. So uh, a Hone Claws, Stone Edge is still more accurate than a. Uh, than a non-hustle uh, stone edge uh, from anything else. So that's really, really nice. The reason I'm rocking him is that if I can get his, if I can scout his scissor set and I can get it to about 80 and get to plus one, Rockium is going to knock it out no matter what it is. Uh, like even, even a max defense variant, it's going to straight blow it back. Uh, we got X Scissor on there because X Scissor hits the Shaman, the Hoopa, uh, Shaman, which I'm speed creaming. I'm also speed tying his nine tails. Uh, I want to make sure that I have the speed tie on that. I can stone edge it. Uh, we've got uh, Thunderfang, which hits the Kabutops, the Pelipper, and the Manaphy. Uh, X Scissor hits the Zygarde really hard, and it can't knock me out at plus one uh, with, with Thousand Arrows or even Earthquake uh, because of Durant's natural bulk in its defense. Uh, and then, of course, X Scissor also hits the Hoopa. Pretty much his entire team. Stone Edge hits the, uh, the Rotom Heat. Mill Tank, if it's not carrying Fire Punch, which, of course, I'll scout for, uh, is pretty much 2 it KO'd by plus, two, uh, by plus one X Scissor. Uh, into Rockium, so that's always uh, an option. I have multiple ways of dealing with his entire team with this mon. So yeah, that's uh, it's a pretty straightforward team. We're going to uh, hop right into the battle right now. As we're going to see, this is the team that Tog decided to bring. He's got the Mega Scizor, the Manaphy, the Mill Tank, Shaman, Rotom Heat, and Nine Tails. I was actually really surprised not to see Pelipper, not to see Rain in general, because Kabutops demolished me outside of Como, uh, and Z Double Edge was always on the table. It, it forced me to run Protect on my Como, so I was uh, I was kind of uh, weirded out by that. Honestly, it was, uh, it was it was surprising for me. But I'm gonna lead with my best possible lead, which is of course my Scarf Coco. I can gain momentum on anything he decides to lead with. He has to fear Taunt on his Nine Tails uh, if he's running the standard Aurora Veil set. He has to fear Taunt on his Mill Tank, uh, and he has to fear Volt Switch plus U-Turn on everything else. So that's what I'm gonna lead with. Captain Crunch leading off against Kent the Rotom Heat. So I'm gonna get out of here with Volt Switch. I count the damage. I see that this thing is uh, pretty much specially defensive. Uh, he's, I'm gonna go into Meloetta and this Volt Switch in terrain bounces off. He's not affected by terrain because he's Levitate, so that's why I bounced off. Did 9%, absolutely nothing. In comes the Scizor. Now I'm really fearing for my life right here because I'm worried that this Scizor is Pursuit. Uh, and I'm like, okay, do I switch out or do, do I just stay in and thunder him? And I debated it and I was like, you know what? Pursuit is only really good for Meloetta and Yuxi, and both of those get U turned on anyway. So I'm, I very much doubt that he has Pursuit on this thing. So I'm just gonna switch hard into my Silvali. Call it correctly, he does not pursue me, goes for the U-turn instead, does 12%, absolutely nothing. In comes in the Rotom again. Uh, unfortunately, right here, I am faster than the Rotom, so I have to parting shot out on what I expect to be a Volt Switch. However, he's at minus one and he's defensive, so I'm gonna bring in my Como. Uh, this can take pretty much every anything. He goes for a Toxic. I'm gonna go for a Drain Punch on the following turn. I am faster than his Rotom, and I do chip it a little bit more. Leave it at 
percent. That's quite nice. He goes for Volt Switch, and uh, he's now going to bring in uh, the big threat, which is Nine Tails. Uh, this thing is scary as all hell. So I'm expecting Veil right here. I'm going to take the Toxic, bring me down to 81. I'm expecting Veil, and I'm thinking, okay, so Volley Fire can just come in and defog and repeat the process. I know that I can't keep this up forever because he's got a really nice momentum core with the Scizor and the Ronin. And for all I know, the Manaphy has U-Turn as well. So I got to get out of here. I got to go into my Silvali Fire. I'm going to take the Blizzard. Uh, it does 21%, which is actually quite a bit even to no spit F. So I figure out that this thing is uh, quite offensive as well. It's not like running HP or anything. So I got to get out of here uh, with, the, uh, with the Parting Shot. Uh, I know that he's not going to stay in when he's uh, a nine tail, so I'm going to get right on out. I'm going to go into Terror on his Cant. So now I finally get the momentum back in my favor. His Rotom is the one that's forced to switch out at this point. It's at minus one. It can't do too much to my Aerodactyl, even with a Volt Switch. Uh, and even if he Thunderbolts me, that doesn't matter. I can roost off the damage. He's a... Um he, uh, he's a fire type, is his other typing, so he can't hit me for super effective if I roost. So, uh, all of those factors uh, make it so that I'm pretty much free to set up rocks at this point. Uh, as I know that his Rotom's probably not staying in. So he's going to get out of here. He's going to go into his Miltank. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to get up rocks. And his uh, Miltank decides to uh, go for the rocks of its own, I believe, as I go into Como. And now rocks up are on my side, uh, or up on my side, rather. Uh, and that's kind of bad for Silvali because you guys can see that it's, uh, well, you can't see that on screen, actually, but it's at 61%. So it's, it's only got three more switch-ins. Uh, and if I want to switch into Scizor reliably, that's not going to be easy. So uh, the fact that I don't have Defog or Rapid Spin on this team, going to make it a little bit harder. Uh, on, on me, especially against the Scizor, so I'm just gonna go for a Drain Punch here, and Chris actually decides to bring in his Ninetales, which ends up chipping it quite a bit, because I do uh, have enough power to leave this thing at, uh, at in range to where it only has one more rock switch in, and I still have a very good switch into this thing being Meloetta, my other uh, very specially defensive Mon that can take on any attack from this thing. He goes for Blizzard, uh, I take a good, a, a good chunk from that, including Hail. He's gonna go into his Shaman. I decide to Thunder this turn, because uh, I'm thinking his uh, one of his best switch-ins is probably Scizor, uh, being, if, if it is specially defensive, I don't really know what it is yet, uh, the damage on Silvali told me nothing, so I'm just gonna go for the, th the Thunder, if I get the 60% para, great, uh, and if I don't, then so be it, I end up missing the Thunder, that's fine, it's just a Shaman, and I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna go for the, uh, what do I go for here, I go for the U-turn, and he ends up being faster than me and going for a Seed Bomb, uh, and does a lot to me, uh, and he leaves me almost in range of rocks, I'm at 17%, so that's fine, I can still come in later. Uh, I'm gonna go into Arrow, uh, expecting the, um, the Aerial Ace, Chris is gonna switch into his Mill Tank, take 12%, uh, I have Ice Fang, and that's what I went for, and, uh, Ice Fang is resisted by, uh, the Thick Fat, as a result. However, my luck persists this season, and I'm able to get a Freeze on the Mill Tank, and that is going to kind of change the course of the game because he no longer has his best check to my arrow intact. So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go for Stone Edge, excuse me, as he thaws immediately and goes for the Seismic Toss. I was really happy to see him thaw right away, uh, but he probably would not have gone for Seismic Toss if it wasn't for the Freeze. Because he had to try to get damage on whatever would switch in uh, and, uh, and try to set up on him. For example, my Como, he still doesn't know my whole set. So I'm going to go for the edge. He does thaw. That's great. I'm going to go into Como on the next turn, and he's going to go for a milk drink. And uh, right here, I can throw out a free drain punch as he goes back into his Shaman. Uh, I see Seed Bomb, so I'm thinking he's probably not carrying Dazzling Gleam. Uh, I gotta, I gotta think about this for a second, uh, and I end up staying in, he goes for Zen Headbutt, so I'm like, okay, that's great, go for the Ice Punch, it actually doesn't knock him out, and it leaves him at 14%, uh, so what I'm gonna do here is, on Expected Synthesis, I'm gonna switch into Durant, he ends up going for Zen, uh, for Synthesis, and I do, uh, call it correctly, and I get in my Durant for free, so that's really nice, he's gonna go into his Rotom, I'm gonna Home Claws up, and I know that this thing isn't Scarfed, we saw Leftovers, I'm gonna go for the, so uh, the Simple Stone Edge, and that's gonna knock him out, 80%, 86% accuracy, very nice, Nice. He's now going to go into his nine tails, and this is pretty much screaming, screaming choice scarf. I'm like, there's no way you bring in nine tails on a speed tie when you have a uh, a mill tank that can just seismic toss me down, as well as a scissor which should be able to take any hit, right? So he goes into his nine tails. I'm like, no way. I'm getting out of here. Gonna sack off my Meloetta. At this point, I figured out the Meloetta pretty much wasn't useful to, against this team. I still had my uh, my Coco for his uh, Manaphy. 
and uh, that would have easily been able to uh, to deal with it. Uh, so I didn't need this. Pelipper didn't come. I really didn't need Meloetta for anything. So I'm going to let it go down. I'm going to go into Como, knowing that he's probably locked into HP Fire. And he's going to go back into his Shaman. I'm going to go for the Drain Punch, heal up some more. And uh, he's going to take a little bit of Hail and the Leftovers. And uh, he can't uh, recover too heavily because the Hail is up right now. Uh, and he's going to go into Scizor as I decide to Ice Punch. And... Um, yeah, so, uh, the Miltank thawed earlier, uh, but I don't know about the Scizor. And that's two freezes, one game, 10%, uh, and I felt really, really bad about this. Now, obviously, I still have my Rock Aim intact. Uh, I could have calc the damage from the Ice Punch and seen, uh, how bulky he was, and I might have still been able to deal with his Scizor with just my Durant, uh, but... It would have made things a lot harder right here because an SD would have absolutely destroyed me. Uh, my Silvali is uh, still sitting at 61, so it can still come in, uh, but I'm not dying to poison rapidly enough. So I have to go directly into my Silvali as he doubles into his Ninetales, sacking it off. Good play on his part. Again, not letting me get set up with anything. And uh, he's going to go into his Manaphy. Now, at this point, because his Manaphy came in and his Scizor is frozen, I'm thinking... I can probably win the game without Arceus, uh, without Silvali, excuse me, without Arceus 50%. Uh, I can probably just parting shot out here, see what he wants to do. He would probably try to take advantage of this and tr try to set up a Z Rain Dance or go for a, um, or go for a Tail Glow, any one of those, especially if he's Wakan, you can easily go for a Tail Glow and pick up a free kill. So I'm not going to hard switch out on this. I'm going to parting shot as he decides to go for the Z Rain Dance. And uh, now I get a parting shot off. My Silvali is still, uh, my, uh, yeah, my Silvali is still alive and I get in my Scarfed Coco. So I'm going to go for the Volt Switch right here as he decides to go into a Shaman. Uh, actually, I go for the Thunderbolt because I know that he's not Wakan Berry at this point. Uh, he just went for Z Rain Dance, so I can easily Thunderbolt. He's going to go into his Miltank and uh, he's going to reveal the move that I completely disregarded as a possibility. I really thought his last move would be Fire Punch because uh, Durant is such a big threat and I understand that he has Scarfed uh, Ninetales, but other than that, it killed the entire team. So I really, really thought that his last move was Fire Punch and that's the reason that I let my Silvali... Um, get as low as it did and i went into it directly on the scissor a scissor rather than going into durant so i'm gonna thunderbolt and he reveals the heal bell so now his uh scissor is healed uh it's not frozen anymore so now i'm kind of worried as uh he's going to go into his scissor my electric terrain is still up and um chris makes a very nice play here he actually doubles into his manaphy uh to make my terrain go down uh and i'm gonna get the uh, the manaphy dead and uh, the Scizor is going to come back in and uh, take 12%. And this Thunderbolt does not knock him out. It does 43%. So my idea here was as long as I keep this thing in range of Rockium, I'm good to go. Uh, so I'm going to go for another T-Bolt. And I crit him for the game. And this ends up being a 5-0. So the turn after that, what would have happened would have been I would have Volt switched into my Silvali Fire to force out the... Uh, to force out the bullet punch. Then I would have gone into Durant, Hone clawed up, and based on the calcs that I was doing, I could knock him out with a Z Stone Edge from where he would have been after the roost on my Volt Switch. Uh, and that would have been the game. So that was the idea. The thing is, we didn't even get to see how that played out because if Chris decided to uh, if Chris decided to Swords Dance right there, he would have still died to the uh, to the Rockium, so he needed to Roost, and I would have eventually gotten off the, the Volt Switch. If he decides to Swords Dance on the turn I go for Volt Switch, then Rockium still knocks him out. So the crit at the end didn't matter as much as, uh, as the freezes. The first freeze hardly mattered because I think he would have gone for a Seismic Toss anyway, and he still got off the Milk Drink uh, at some point, I believe, and he, he got his, his Milk Tank healthy, so... That made him play a little bit differently. The Scizor getting frozen at the end made him play completely differently. He had to get in Mill Tank to heal Bell off the damage, so as to restore his win con. Uh, he was, of course, SD, uh, so that would have completely played out differently uh, right there. Again, my idea was, as long as I have the Rockium in the back, I can still knock this thing out with, uh, with my Durant, so uh, I went for that.
over anything else. Uh, it turns out that he didn't have, uh, and I would have figured this out by this point, he didn't have superpower either, so he would have been relying on bullet punch to break my Durant, which is very, very difficult uh, considering Durant's bulk. So uh, my Rockium would have knocked him out first, essentially. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, it would have come down to, uh, to him critting me, I guess. Uh, there was always that chance in the back, but I'm pretty much the one that hacks Chris this entire game, so my apologies uh, for that. I played the way that I thought that I needed to, uh, and it came down to uh, to the multiple freezes from 10%. That, that was absolutely ridiculous. I hope that doesn't happen to Chris anymore this season. Uh, and uh, I don't want to win with hacks like this. I, I already told you guys last week. Uh, I don't want to win with hacks like this. I want my teams to come through. Because this doesn't prove anything about my team. Uh, it doesn't prove how good it actually is or, or how solid the draft is, how sound it is uh, when all I'm doing is, is getting wins through hacks. Uh, I crit the... Uh, what was it? I crit the... Um, the Shadow Claw on the Megalodios, which didn't end up mattering, but it could have. Uh, I ended up getting a bunch of drops on Merc and critting him in the endgame with the uh, the Durant, which could have or could not have mattered. Uh, the drops definitely did, all the drops did, uh, but I played my, my odds with those drops. Uh, I went for Shadow Ball on some turns, but like things like this, like 10% freezes and stuff, I didn't run Ice Fang and Ice Punch because I wanted to get freezes. I ran them because they were the coverage that I needed for... Uh, the Zygarde and they ended up coming through with freezes. So there's nothing I can really do about that uh, Chris didn't ask for a restart or anything. I probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't restart anyway because uh, I don't I'm not a huge fan of restarts You guys can go and check out turbo's video on that. But anyway, that is a win for us So we end up uh, four and one plus ten if you guys um, Have not checked out the other matches yet definitely go and see them because I'm about to spoil you on something um, after all of the matches uh, this this week I am now at the top of the league. Um, Gypsy is right behind me at 4-1. and one. I never thought I'd be saying this in my life. Gypsy is behind me uh, at 4-1 and one with a plus 9 record. He's just behind us. So if I can keep up this winning streak, uh, that would be awesome. I would love to. Uh, I'd love to go 8-2 and two this season. That would be fantastic, honestly. However, the, the challenges that are ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen, next week we are playing Danza, who is uh, is doing pretty hot himself. I think he just came off of a loss, though, in week five. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to capitalize on that. Week after, I'm taking on somebody that I've never beaten uh, and that I've only beaten on the ladder, but never in draft league format, uh, which is Rob. Uh, and Rob's team is uh, is pretty sick. Uh, he's got a sick regen core. He's got the, the Mega Altaria, the Lycan Rock, which has been putting in work for him. Um, things like that. And then he's got, and then uh, who else are we taking on? We're taking on Verd after him. And then we're taking on Trev. And then we're taking on Maddie in the last week. And that is a scary, scary end, uh, end of the season schedule. I have to play the number two team in the opposing conference being Rob. Uh, whether it was Gypsy or Rob, either way, it was going to be really, really hard. Um, I'm just glad it's Rob because Gypsy is absolutely ridiculous. But it can be argued that Rob uh, on, his, on his good days is, uh, is just as good as Gypsy. So... I'm not looking forward to that week seven match, but next week we got Danza. Uh, be looking out for that. That's going to be up uh, usual uh, on. Well, our upload schedules always change every week, but um, it's going to be up on uh, on Saturday as usual. So definitely uh, make sure to catch that. Uh, if you guys didn't enjoy, as usual, make uh, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go and check out Chris in the description down below. He's doing videos again. I'm so hyped. I'm going to be watching his side for sure. Uh, once again, want to hear the salt in my opponent's voice. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Ciao.